Well, hello and welcome to my bathroom. <laughs> I have seven pens to clean today. I have the Parker Dual Fold Centennial. I have the Edison Collier uh, Rock Candy. I have a Pilot uh, Kakuno, which uh, review coming soon. Uh, I have the Twisby Mini. I have a Kaveco Sport. I have a Pelican M405 and a Sailor Pro Gear to clean. So I got a lot of pens to clean. And I thought, I'm going to be in my bathroom a while. Why don't I film it? Because <laughs> who doesn't think about filming things in their bathroom? Don't answer that if the answer was yes. <laughs> uh, so I figured while I do this, a task that I put off far too long, um, I thought I'd answer some questions, give you some updates, just whatever happens happens i mean yeah and yes i brought in an office chair to my bathroom because i figured between cleaning all of these pens and talking to you guys i'm gonna be in here for about an hour which is a long time to stand hunched over a sink and today's workout was a plyometric based workout so my legs are jello <laughs> so yeah let's get into it shall we we're gonna start with Let's start off nicely with the Pilot Kakuno. This one's gonna be probably easier to clean um, because it hasn't been sitting around. I'm very scared for this one because it has gotten dry and crusty, which is not something I let happen very often, but what are you gonna do? Uh, so I'll just check in the lid. It's got a little bit, so I'll give it a quick, a quick squishish. Um, so, Speaking of workout, um, I have been keeping up with that. Um, so I've been following online um, a program because I mean, gyms are open now in my area, but like, I don't wanna go to one. <laughs> you will not catch my butt going to a gym, uh, you know, in the, the life of COVID. Um, but to be honest, even if, there was no COVID, I probably still wouldn't go to a gym. I'd probably still choose um, to do it at home. Reason being is because I don't like to go to gyms. Um, I went to one a couple times when I was in university. I just don't enjoy it. Um, I don't know if this is gonna be too loud. I guess there's really only one way to find out. Um, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy going to the gym because there's just so much wasted time. Like when you go to the gym, you know, like you first, you gotta like hop in your car and drive there. And if you live close enough, then good for you. But most people don't. And then when you're there, you just get all sweaty, and gross and disgusting. And then you gotta get back in your car. And then you gotta make your car sweaty and gross and just like, ugh, the idea of that just grosses me out. So I prefer to do it at home because then I can get hot and sweaty and gross at home and then just get in the shower. Um, I suppose you could shower at the gym, but I don't know. Again, I also know myself in that uh, if I have to go somewhere and do it, I am much more likely to find an excuse to not do it. Whereas if I'm at home, if the workout's like 30 to 45 minutes, I have no excuses, none. All I gotta do is just get changed and go. Like, come on. So yeah, I much prefer at home and I am on board with that. Um, I've done a few different cycles of workouts now. Cause they, there's different like programs you can you can do. Um, so I'm on I'm on the third program now, um, or like third like different thing, and like each one gets harder and harder so that you don't plateau. Um, the old bulb syringe, man, it's just the best. Um, because yeah, you never want to plateau. If you plateau, that's 
it sucks. So you got to keep elevating it, keep challenging it, keep pushing yourself to do better and better and better and better and better. Um, because yeah, I'm just making sure there we go. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I've been keeping up. I've been feeling really good about that. Um, I've been keeping up with the food as well. Not really like a diet diet. I'm not following anything. Um, mostly because I think diets are stupid. <laughs> because they're, they're not, I mean, they work. I mean, that's why a million people follow them, but they're not sustainable for like your entire life. So I don't follow a diet. Um, basically I've cut out all the junk foods so like chips and sodas and stuff. Not that I really was a huge pop drinker. Um, but I mean, I could crush a whole bag of Doritos, like a family size bag of Doritos <laughs> in like one sitting and be totes okay with it. Um, so <laughs> I've stopped doing that. Um, I still like have food if I'm going out somewhere. So like I'll have pizza or whatever. Like it's not like I'm cutting it up completely. It's just, you know, the whole in moderation type thing. So if I know I'm gonna be going out somewhere, wow, I'm gonna need the rubber grip. Uh, if I know I'm gonna be going out somewhere like for dinner or things like that, um, Oh gosh, that one's really in there. I will not compensate for it in the sense of like, I'm not gonna not eat all day, but I mean, I'm gonna know that like primarily whatever it is I'm gonna have is gonna be like very high in carbs and fats. So I might eat a lot of like protein throughout the day. Um, Cause if you go somewhere, you're not really gonna get a whole lot of like protein for dinner. That's really the only thing I've been doing for the most part is just like I'm not tracking like macros to a T or anything like that I'm just being more aware of what I'm putting in my body um and I think it's working um I feel a lot better um it's definitely coming off a little bit I feel stronger which is the uh main goal I should say um in the job that I do it requires a lot of heavy lifting um a lot of like, you know, picking up heavy boxes off of one thing and moving them to other places. So <laughs> um, that's gotten a lot of, lot easier, which is nice. Um, and I just feel like I can rely on my body a little bit longer. Thing, just like simple things, like getting in and out of the car is easier. Um, you know, like getting off and like from the ground to standing, like playing with Parker is easier. Just the little things like that, which I really appreciate. Um, and I really, really like and I've done this before I mean let's be real you can go through my videos which I don't even have that many of you know considering my whole life um but I mean you can go through my videos and see like weight go up and down um but this time it's a little bit different in the sense that like whoop, I'm playing the long game I'm not just playing the short game so yeah feeling pretty good about that um, still keeping up with, you know, journaling a lot, uh, which revolves around various things. Um, whatever I happen to be doing that day, how I'm feeling, like just random, random things. Um, so, I mean, that hasn't changed. Uh, work's been going okay. Whoa, that's a lot of color that just came out of that, even though it was running clear. Um, work's been going pretty good. Um, I'm doing a bit of an experience at work. So essentially what that means is like half the time I'm doing my regular job that I do every day. Um, and then the other half of the time, uh, I'm doing something else. Um, just stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit, challenging myself a little bit, you know, just forcing myself to grow in all aspects of life. Uh, which is good, it's needed. I mean, I'm 31 years old. I was taking my sweet, sweet time. Um, I made the final down payment on my condo, which is super dope, uh, which means that I no longer have to pay anything until it is built, um, which was supposed to be October of 2022. Uh, yes, it takes that long. Um, because I was the first wave to get in, which has its pros and cons. Uh, con being is you're waiting for a long time. 
you're waiting for quite some time because you're in you're in wave one. Like, you know, you're you're going to wait the longest out of anyone. The pro of that means you're going to pay the least amount of money out of everybody. So, uh, good and bad um, with that. Wow, this is just sticking in here like glue. This color. And my Caveco Sport was the Sailor Manyo Kikyu ink. I don't think I pronounced that right, but it is one of my favorite inks. Um, probably my second favorite ink. And I'm sure most of you know what my first one is. But for those of you who don't, it is the Mont Blanc James Purdy and Son uh, Single Malt. Um, yeah, so I've made the final payment. Essentially what they did is the um, entire down payment, which is 20%, um, they spread out over the course of a year and a half, roughly. Um, so you don't pay the entire 20% chunk like you would if you were to move into something that's already built. Um, you pay that 20% over the course of about a year and a half, which for me works out beautifully. Uh, it's much more manageable that way. Um, and then that way I have 20% paid off, um, you know, when I move in, which is great uh, because then it avoids any extra fees for not doing the 20% down. Um, and I mean, then I have 20% less to pay. So, <laughs> you know, win-win. Um, so that was cool. That happened uh, this month. And what else happened this month? Something not good happened this month. So a little bit of a backstory. It's gonna be story time. <laughs> so July 2nd, um, Parker was acting kind of weird one day. And by one day, I mean on July 2nd. She kept like looking like there was bugs or something that she wanted to chase that she couldn't get at. And it was weird because normally if there's bugs or something like that, like she just goes to town and she's able to get it no problem. But this time she just wasn't. And we were so perplexed as to why. So the day goes on and on, you know, we proceed as usual. And then comes her nap time, which is like, I don't know, like 1.30, two o'clock-ish. I go over, I give her some pets and, you know, some lovin's, and I look above where her bed is. And her bed is in the front of the house, uh, over, like, just underneath the front window, which has sort of a bit of a, um, an alcove above it. So it's like a raised portion of the ceiling. Uh, right now I'm basically just, uh, cleaning out a little converter, not a converter, cartridge, um, that I use for my uh, Quebecco Sport <laughs> because I don't have a converter for it and I don't want to have to continue to use cartridges. I like to use bottled ink, so I just fill it up. And I pretty much fill it up with the same ink every time, so I don't necessarily care that, you know, it's a little bit stained. Um, anyways, so I look up and you would not flip and believe what I saw. We live in a suburb. We don't live in a forested area or out in the wild. In fact, there's barely any trees in this town, which is stupid, but it was a flipping bat. That's right. Like a flipping bat. Yeah. In my ceiling. <laughs> so my dad gets like this big ass broom thing to try and like swoop it out. I've picked up Parker at this point. I'm in uh, a bedroom basically with the door closed so that uh, the bat can't fly in. I've closed all the doors in like the house essentially so that the bat can only fly around in so many rooms so that as we try and like corral this thing out of our house, uh, it can't go in like every single room uh, and make it super difficult to catch it. I don't know exactly what my dad did because like I said, I'm hiding in my room at this point and I'm on my phone searching, you know, rabies symptoms. <laughs> Which by the way, <clears throat> don't do that because it's very scary. <laughs> it is very, very scary, the symptoms of rabies. And uh, it turns out 
uh, if your pet gets bitten by something that has rabies, uh, especially a cat, there's nothing the vet can do. They can't even test to see if this animal has rabies like a cat. They have to wait until it's dead in order to test it. So, um, yeah, and it can take up to a year for cats to start showing symptoms of rabies. And then when they do start to show symptoms, they're dead in seven to 10 days. So don't, yeah, don't look it up. <laughs> um, so that was crazy. Good thing is though, uh, I do take her to the vet on a regular basis. So she has all of her shots, she's up to date. She does, you know, have her immunization for rabies. So even if she got into a fight with this thing, which I'm sure she did because she gets into a fight with everything that flies, bugs, whatever, um, then she is good to go. So we're thinking, how the flip did a bat get in our house, right? You know, who knows? Who knows? So we thought, okay, well, we had the door open for quite a while, um, you know, one day when we were outside, like one night. And bats come out from dusk till dawn. So we thought, okay, maybe somehow something flew in, whatever. So we just let it go. We stopped thinking about it, you know, like... They kept saying like, they, well, and when I say they, I mean the internet. The internet kept saying like, you know, you'll hear them in the walls, you'll hear them flying around, you'll hear them screeching, you'll start to smell things from their like pee and poop. Um, you'll start to see the poop. Um, and we hadn't seen any of that. So we were like, okay, I guess we don't actually have bats then. It was just like one random one that got in. Turns out not the case, not the case at all. We thought we had mice at one point because I could hear in the, the walls of my bedroom, like a scratching and some nights it was very loud. And I was like, what the actual heck? So um, we set out some mouse traps and we saw what looked like a little bit of mouse poop. And I have a cottage, you know, I've been going to a cottage since I was young. So I know what mouse poop looks like. Mice don't freak me out. I'm just whatever. So we put down some mouse traps. A couple days go by and we don't see anything. The traps don't set off anything. And we're like, la la la, whatever. Okay, like they're in the walls. They just don't want to come out. You know, can't blame them for that. It's probably cozy in there. Well, <laughs> it gets worse. So we're thinking, okay, these mice are gonna be in there. There's some nights where I can't even sleep the scratching is that loud. So we're just living our best lives, doing whatever. And then it was two Fridays ago, something like that. So today's the 29th of August. Uh, so that would have been I don't know, the 22nd or something like that. I hear a crazy, crazy amount of flipping scratching. And I'm thinking, okay, these mice are really taking me off, right? Like at this point, I, I have earplugs that I just am wearing. So I go back to sleep. Then I feel a flutter of cold air over my face. Then I feel it again. So I open my eyes and the bats in my flipping room flying above my head, dive bombing me. And I'm like, what the, what the? So then Parker is going bananas. Did I mention that this is 2.30 in the morning? So Parker's going nuts. I finally corral her out so that she can't get it. I'm like losing my mind. So of course my dad wakes up and he's like, what the heck is going on? So then I tell him and he's like, you're kidding me. And I'm like, dude, it's flying, open your eyes. It's flying around the house like crazy. So my dad finally gets it out. My mom sleeps through the whole flipping thing. Cause I, I of course live in the basement, right? So I don't expect them to hear anything down here. But when it got upstairs, that was a different story. That was a different story. So now I'm freaking out, right? Like. Now I'm like, okay, this is the second one. So we obviously have bats. 
And then later when I Google something differently, I realize that, yeah, that scratching that I've been hearing, that's bats. I start to Google everything, everything and everything that I can find of like, who the heck can come to your house and get rid of bats? I don't know. So I'm calling everybody, I'm calling everybody. Keep in mind, again, it's like, you know, a week and a half away from being September. Nobody can come out until like the second week of September. And I'm like, no, 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 no. You don't understand people. We have flipping bats that are getting into the active part of the house. If they would stay in the walls or they would stay in the attic, then fine. La la la, I can deal with that. But they're getting into the actual house. So long story short, and not really long story short, this has been taking forever. <laughs> they, I finally get somebody to come around. They reseal all the entire outside of my house, except for one spot where they put a one-way door so that these animals can get out, but they can't get back in. Thankfully, we did actually have this happen in late Octo uh, August, because if it happens in June or July, you just have to suck it up, buttercup, and live with it because the babies are too young then and they won't do it because then mom and dad and family will leave, but they won't be able to get back in. The babies are too young to fly. They're going to die and they're going to just be all gross and bleh in your attic or walls or wherever they happen to be. So it's been about four days now since that got done. And I'm trying to listen at night to see if I can hear them to see if they've all left because there's no way to officially confirm if they've left because you can't see them. <laughs> um, but of course, being flipping Ontario in the end of August, we've had storms pretty much every night. So it's really difficult to hear them. <laughs> so I haven't slept in like a week and I'm going nuts, but I think they're gone now, I think. Again, I can't confirm that because I don't know how many were in there to begin with. Obviously two for sure um, that we corralled out, but they could have gotten back in because apparently bats are very smart at doing that. Um, so yeah, I really hope that they're gone because I was never afraid of bats. Again, I have a cottage. We used to see bats all the time, but we would see them all the time outside. And who cares if they're outside? That's where they're supposed to be. They're eating all the bugs. They're doing a good thing. Apparently, fun fact, uh, bugs or bats are really good for pollinating. Just, you know, like carrying pollen from one um, plant to the other. So they're protected species, which I also didn't know. And according to one website, which could be full of Kaka poo poo, I don't know. <laughs> um, they are estimated to be about $3.1 billion. It's either three or 13, I almost can't even remember now. 3.1 or 13.1, either way, a lot of flipping money. Billion dollars uh, to the e ecology, ecological system. Oh my gosh, I haven't slept in a week, people. Um, so, so that's pretty cool. Um, to know that they do that, um, that they're that important. I mean, I always knew bats were important, but like when you see like that much money, I, again, I had no idea that they were pollinators. I just thought that they ate all the bugs, um, which also dope because they keep the mosquito population down, the spider population down, all that kind of good stuff. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's been my life. I'm really hoping they're gone, man. I need to sleep. Um, so yeah, good stuff. Um, as far as this channel goes, now that we're like 20 plus minutes into this already, I'm going to try and cut it off here because it's taken a long time. I am on the fourth pen. So I've cleaned the Kakuno, the Quebec Sport, the Edison Collier, the Sailor, and now I'm on the, well, I'm on the Sailor now. I've got the Twisby, the Pelican, and the Parker Duo Fold left. Um, yeah, as far as this channel goes, uh, I do have some more videos coming up. Um, if you checked my video that I did about the unboxing from La Coron de Con, um, you'll know that there's a couple notebooks coming up. Um, I still haven't figured out how to do the ink reviews yet because it's really, really difficult 
to get color accuracy. Um, and that's really important when it comes to doing ink reviews. Um, so that is going to be a little bit tough. I might just do like a let's chat about this rather than like an actual review of said ink. Um, just so that way you guys can't bust me for not being like totally color accurate. <laughs> um, jumping over to the Pelican now. So I have those coming up. Um, I have the Pilot Kakuno video coming up. Um, I will have, uh, wow, this is really stiff. How long have I left this in here for? <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got some good stuff coming up. Um, oh yeah, it's a purple ink. Oh boy, this is gonna be a nightmare to clean. <laughs> I have a few videos coming up on um, some random type things. They're not necessarily reviews, but they're like how I clean out or not how I clean up, like how I grease, uh, you know, some of the, the piston mechanisms and some of my pens um, if they're like feeling stiff like this Pelican one is. Um, so I'll talk about that. Um, I will have a video coming out, uh, which actually, might already be out by the time this one is. Um, it's the part two. So I did a video on how to sell pens online or top five tips of how to sell things online. Um, and I have one on how top five tips on how to buy things online. So um, stay tuned for that. If it's already out, check that out, which it should be by the time this is out. Um, so definitely take a look there. Um, what else? Couple, yeah, I was gonna say a couple journals. Um, I've got a few journals that were sent to me for review. Um, journals take a while. It's a shocking uh progress, like progress, no process to review journals because with any paper in not just journals, but any paper, you've got to use them with a wide variety of pens and ink for a while to kind of get the feel of it. Um, you know, you want to use it for a while to see like the durability of it. Um, so it takes uh, quite a while to do anything paper related. Um, but yeah, just lots of stuff, <laughs> lots of stuff. Um, I haven't done, and let me know in the comment section down below, because if you're still here, then that means that you are an avid pens and tea watcher. So thank you because this has been a long rambling journey. Um, if you're still here, let me know in the comments down below if you want me to bring back the, um, wow, what did I even call them? That's how long it's been. Like the quick Q and A ones that I do in the car. Um, oh, pension chat, <laughs> that's what it was engine chat. Uh, let me know if you want me to bring that back. Um, I stopped doing that when it got like to be winter because uh, as I mentioned before, I live in Ontario and winter is a beep to drive in. Um, and I don't like it very much, <laughs> mostly because I don't trust other people. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, let me know if you want me to start bringing that back again. Um, I don't know if I'll do it twice a week. I don't even necessarily know if I'll do it once a week, but I will definitely be doing it probably either once a week or once every other week. Um, so yeah, let me know what you want to see there. Sorry, I had to focus. I was taking the uh, nib and feed out of the Twisby here, which is amazing. I love the fact that you can disassemble Twisbys to clean them out. It makes them super easy. Uh, but their feeds are a little uh, delicate. So when you pull them out for the first time, you've got to be pretty careful. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> so um, yeah, there's that. Um, so guys, I've almost made it through. I still have the Parker pen. I've been purposefully leaving that for last because I know it's going to be a pain in the tuchus. Um, but I feel like this is a very, very long video and I feel like I'm boring you. Whoa. 
just sploshed water everywhere. It's also what she said. <laughs> so yeah, I feel like I'm boring you. I don't want to bore you. So I think I'm going to cut this off here today. Um, did you like this style of video where literally it's just a stream of consciousness? Um, <laughs> nothing too smart going on here. Um, you know, where I just blab about whatever comes to my mind um, while I clean my pens. Because if you like that, then I might do these every once in a while when I have probably more than, you know, two pens to clean or something like that. Um, it's hard to make this a like straight up Q&A only because, I mean, as you can probably tell just from my rambling, Whoa, that shot everywhere. <laughs> I'm cleaning like the inside of the speed. As you can tell by my rambling, um, sometimes, you know, when the brain is thinking one thing, the mouth is doing another, it, it can be a little bit difficult. So let me know. Let me know all the things. Guys, I appreciate you so much. Um, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around for so long. Thank you for watching and supporting um, my We Need to Chat or We Need to Talk video. Um, if you watched that one, because the outpouring in that was just phenomenal. Uh, it made me feel so much better um, because I did feel like I was sort of abandoning you guys. Not that I knew I was, like I wasn't abandoning you in the sense, I just, I don't wanna put out a video where I have to fake energy. You know, like, I don't want to put it out being like, I'm secretly miserable and don't want to do this, but I'm going to fake it and be all like, guys, oh my God, check this out. This is so cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I don't want to be that. So I, that's why I didn't film for a long time. And that's why, you know, my Monday and Friday videos um, have taken a bit of a pause. Not every single one of them um, has come out on, you know, every twice a week, whatever. So yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that a lot. Um, Cause you guys are amazing. So yeah, thank you for watching. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe, all of that good stuff. I won't ramble on anymore because this is already like a 30 minute video. And again, if you made it this far, I appreciate it very much. Actually, you know what? If you made it this far, uh, comment, what's a random comment? Comment uh, Sasquatch down below and we'll see how many people made it this far. All right. See you guys. Bye.